According to Joy St. John, the executive director of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, the Caribbean is lucky to have access to a variety of vaccines, either from donations or bilateral purchases. But at the same time, the region is battling two difficult challenges, the Delta variant and vaccine hesitancy. She was making a presentation during a virtual engagement that also saw the participation of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, where the pandemic has taken a toll in smaller economies and smaller populations of island people. Delta has become the most widely circulated um, variant in our member states. And also there has been spread of Delta within countries. So at the same time, we have choice and access. We have the spread of all of the variants, but most concerning is that of Delta. And we have seen worrisome upticks in the number of cases and the number of deaths, because the rate of increase of cases and deaths in this region of the Americas for the sub-region of CARICOM is in some cases higher than the rate of increasing cases and death per capita for the rest of the Americas, including the U.S. St. John said, with the Delta variant being the most concerning variant, countries are now seeing worrisome optics in the number of cases and deaths. Friday's virtual session was seen as a follow-up to a meeting between President Irfan Ali and the delegation led by Brian Benjamin, the 78th Lieutenant Governor of New York State. At that meeting, Dr. Ali had called for a global unified response to COVID-19, sentiments that were echoed by Foreign Secretary Robert Prasad during Friday's meeting. According to Prasad, a unified response will determine the survival and continued existence of mankind. We need a unified and a global uh, response in terms of one, ensuring that we have the availability of vaccines, um, and, va and two, that also that we must not be further divided on the types of vaccines that we use. And those who have taken the bold steps um, and, and as it were in the early ages, the risk uh, in terms of taking vaccines even before they were approved should not be penalized, should not be restricted um, in terms of their travel and also participating um, in the global economy in one way or the other. Prasad said a unified response to dealing with vaccine hesitancy was also important, but a more frightening picture was painted by the OECS Director General, Dr. Didikas Jules. We are facing what effectively is an existential, existential crisis in the OECS in particular right now, because when we, we see projections saying that in one OECS member state, in the next week or two, we may very well reach infection rates of one out of every two persons in the population being affected, it tells you that our very existence as a society is under threat. 